Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Introducing Ashes series. If you haven't been with us uh, over the past year or two, we've been doing Ashes Wednesday pretty routinely, and we recently did a couple introducing series for some newer games, Soul yeah. Forge Fusion and Sorcery, the TCG, and it felt like a good time to uh, kind of go back to the beginning with Ashes, which is a game that we uh, we know and love. But you want to give some context on why we're here and what's going to happen? I would love to. As a, as the resident philosopher, I will definitely be happy to explain Official why job we're title. here. Yeah, so uh, first of all, we've got the schedule uh, up on the screen right now. So uh, just a quick check-in with anybody who's here on the fly on the live stream. We do have uh, Introducing Ashes today. We're playing uh, Lord of the Rings tomorrow. Is that their final, that the Realm of the Elf Lords, we get to finally play? From block one. Lord yeah. of the Rings, block one. Beautiful. Yeah, very excited about that one. And then coming in next week, uh, we're doing Introducing Ashes again on Wednesday. So join us again next week. that would be a good time. And then we have the Flesh and Blood TCG, of course, on Tuesday. Marvel Champions kicking off Sinister Motives on Monday. Don't know why I'm going backwards. And look at that, Wheel of Time TCG on Thursday. Thank you very much. We do have Bryce, new automated bot, doing our popped cards today. Bryce 2.0. I don't know how Bryce 2.0 gets this calendar off the screen, though. I'm going to be honest with you. Does Bryce just try it? It doesn't? Now, I'll tell you I'll tell you how. If I say something like Mayoni Viper, will it, uh, it's going to clear. Will it clear? Watch. No way. I... I don't know this, but intuitively, it's what you Oh, happen. my gosh. There's the card. The that's, robots are that's running that's the everything. That's Phoenix one I'm playing. Everyone's happy. Uh, everyone over in marketing is very happy about it, and uh, I'm happy. We love eliminating employees. <laughs> here's here's uh, why we're here. Uh, I did so, play Wayland as so, a, back in the Netrunner <laughs> days. <laughs> introducing Asha. So we, we were looking at the past <laughs> introducing series that we had done uh, for Soul Forge and Sorcery, and we thought to ourselves, you know what really happened with Ashes? is that in, in the original space, when we were bringing it back with PDP, what we were thinking was like, there's all these Ashes players who remember the game, who have played Ashes before, and they're going to be the driving factor in whether or not this works, whether or not this system actually is going to be successful. So we really were talking to all of you. Most of you watching, most of you playing Ashes Reborn right now are probably in that category where you started with Ashes originally in, what, 2015, I think is when it started. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and then uh, it went away, and then we brought it back with this PDP system. And you probably were one of those early players who wanted to get back into it, maybe had a collection, upgraded that collection to the new cards, etc. But what we didn't explicitly do is introduce Ashes Reborn to the wider tabletop gaming audience, the wider card gaming audience that we typically are associated with. Uh, so that you can evaluate it next to new games like Sorcery or Soul Forge uh, or Flesh and Blood or any of those. So this series, this three-part series, is going to be taking you through, I'm just a person who's interested in maybe getting into a new card game or a new tabletop game, or maybe this is my first time being interested in a card game. Maybe I don't like TCGs, maybe I, I'm, I'm confused uh, by rarity, etc., cetera, uh, which I often am. And I'm looking for something to kind of get my feet wet in this competitive card game scene. Uh, Ashes might be for me, so maybe you're that person watching now. Um, so we're going to kick it off, unlike the other introducing series, where we were actually introducing the game to us and you for the first time. We're going to be starting with the selling points of Ashes, because we played it for now seven years. That's crazy. So we have a good idea of what this game is about. <laughs> And Zach is walking slowly into his grave. Uh, so we've got a, a good idea of what Ashes is about. We're going to talk about some of the, the big points for why you might like this game. We went to the community in our Discord. It's wonderful in there, for real. Um, you can find our Discord uh, and, and get in there and get involved with the Ashes channel or just any of the channels in there or the general chat, which is about Sanderson and Overnight Oats. Uh, those two things are, are commonly featured. If, if you're into those two things, it's also a good place to be. Man, I'm so happy I was not taking a drink. Right <laughs> we, I would have been on the ground choking. We, we went to our Discord channel. We asked, hey, community, what makes Ashes so good? So we, we're not just speaking from our own experience, but also from other people's experience. And I'm going to get my computer out and read all of that. Uh, to you all, uh, you know, at some point in this process. But to kick it off... What are you I, reading to us? I'm going to read, like, all of the, the points that the community oh, made about really why. Cool. Well, well yeah, let's yeah. do our own. Let's okay. do our personals. And then see if we we hit all of the community touch you, points as well. Do you want to do the thing we did the other day, which is, like, you say one point, I say one, we yeah. go until someone can't talk? Yeah, we'll go, we'll go yeah. back and forth. Yeah, which means we'll be here for hours. All right, let's talk. Um, What's your number one reason? First of why, all, why should someone play Ashes? There's some good comments. Aaron Clark too. saying, got my start with Ashes from you guys via PDP. You have an amazing track record of recommending great games. 
Well, thank you very much. We we appreciate that. We we've, uh, we've been doing uh, we've been doing games for how old how old is thirteen to now? Twenty years. I started playing Pokemon when I was like nine. Yeah, but you didn't know anything. I didn't, it's accurate. I was nine. How much is how much is changed? I was I could barely read. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so. Oh, the comment I wanted to mention was Oxidor saying that uh, we like eliminate employees should be what clears the schedule. <laughs> like it's, just, it's a clear screen. Yeah. <laughs> also just clears the entire thing, yeah, takes yeah. it down. Yeah. Um, what do we, so Zach and I met 9 and 13, oh, respectively 9 to... and 12, 9 and 11, uh, 9 and 10. I can't remember. What what are we, you young, talking about? we were young kids. How long have we been doing tabletop games? So um, even if we just say a cool 10 years old to now. Yeah. yeah, it's 25-ish years. Okay, so we've been doing this 25-ish mm-hmm. years. That's 50 collective years of gaming experience. Yeah, that's right. Actually, we had everyone here at the company who probably well over 100 years of experience. There's 100 years of experience <laughs> driving the curating of the games that happen on this channel and on our on our business. Uh, so we're glad that you find that to be the case, Aaron. Um, first thing, let's talk about number one on Ashes. So this is like why someone should play this game. I think or why so. they should take the time to consider playing here, it. Here's, here's the things you should consider if you're thinking about, is Ashes right for me? Okay, so I did the same thing with Sorcery. Number I think one. it's only natural. Mm. You gotta love the way the game looks. You're taking the putt. You gotta, that's right. You're it's taking for, the putt. Let's pull Mayoni. It's from, it's from uh, one Mayoni away. Viper back on the screen here. Uh, the art of this game started in 2015. Singular artist Fernando Suarez did an incredible job. The templating, phenomenal. Uh, the I I don't know so and it well, still is some of the best in the game in in the whole space oh, of tabletop the, oh yeah ashes in general so the templating is great the icon work is great the art is just great you can see like somehow in 2015 Plat Hat Games small publisher figured out how to do what seemingly no other publisher could figure out yeah. which is like effectively full art cards no template no yeah. no boxing in of the art. Beautiful, uh, you know, light graphic design, uh, popping colors, high quality everything. How has nobody figured this out? In 2015, this was substantially different than everything else. Yeah. Like all of the card games at that moment, this was like, it It, it still holds up, but it was crazy. I remember Gen Con 2015 walking in the hall, seeing the white box, seeing all the color, looking at this art, and it was just something, You're, something... Different. I'll something special. Up. I'll pick you up on that thread. Um, that hasn't changed. No. no. Nothing has come out that's like, oh, well, you know, now this is the new uh, style. It, no, they're still doing the old templates. Yeah. Everybody's still doing it. Fab's still doing it. Soulforge is still yeah, doing so it. Sorcerer's doing the full bleed thing. Sorcerer's doing the full bleed that, thing. That, that, that's right. They, they got a whole different thing. So they got a painting thing. But the way there. I feel about Sorcery's look compared to everything else is how I felt about this when I first saw it, which is like, this is just on a different level and I've never seen anything quite like it. Um, what, what Do you have any pieces of art that you particularly like? Oh my gosh. There's that Steadfast Guardian. I believe it's Steadfast. Oh, we got the, the bot too. I forget that yeah, we're having to work with a robot it's now. Just, it's just happening. There it is. Uh, anyone chat, what's your favorite piece of art? I just want to pull some of these cards up because this it is works. It's crazy. Look, I mean, look at that. Yeah. Look at that. I'm I'm fond of the art for Golden Veil, mainly because those guilders are just awesome. I love them every time I see them. Being, of course, the uh, the mouse that's painting. Yeah, it'll show the gold. gilder. I think it'll, oh, yeah. yeah you think it'll cues it, it up? Oh, yeah. Gilder's definitely coming. We got the robot at I, work. I'm, I'm so mm. overly confident in Bryce 2.0. Uh, it would make some people more nervous. confident than ever in this yeah. system. Uh, looks like uh, Reef saying Blood Archer. Yeah, uh, yeah. Jessa. Jessa. Uh, what's her last name in this game? It's just Jessa. I'll never know it. <laughs> no. Also, the name of a podcast is just Jessa. Look at that. <laughs> Hammer Knight. Ooh, is that the promo? Is that the promo, Jessa? Cardboard Cast uh, saying, uh, well, asking a question, which I'll get to that in a minute. Your number one thing is art and uh, graphic design. I mean, Dave here's Richards. The, for, Dave Richards is also important here. He you, did the graphic design. Dave, so here's, there's two ways to think about a game. Uh, one, or two ways to think about the art style and the graphic design of a game. One is, it has to be good enough that it doesn't keep you out of the gameplay. Mm-hmm. Ashes checks that box. You gotta love this. If you don't, honestly, if you don't love this, like just looking at it, you probably you probably should move on. Yeah, like Odette. Let's just. Uh, this is one of my favorites, actually. Period. Is Odette. Yeah, I remember the first time I saw Odette just being She's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, How cool is that? So yeah. So one, the first checkpoint does the does the art keep you out of the gameplay? And a lot of, a lot of times the art in the the graphic design isn't 
super awesome. Like I think a lot of people feel this way about Soul Forge, mm-hmm. Soul Forge Fusion. It's like a little dated, um, but it is not enough for most to say like, oh well, then I just can't play this because <laughs> I want to look at it. Um, but the second piece of this is sometimes the art is good enough that you don't care how the game plays. And for some people with Ashes, that's another piece of it um, too. And I have a can I can I tag in on this a little bit more based on the art? You have, a, you have a number two? Do I get two picks in a row? It's a just a draft? slight, it's just a bullet point underneath. I don't think it's a full on okay. topic. Go ahead. I think because of the art style, because of the, the way that the cards look and the scenes displayed and demonstrated, this is a great game to play with your children. I think that's a whole bullet point, man. But it's true. It's absolutely true. It's not just children either. I think this is. I feel so called out. The way the art functions and the way it looks is universally approachable and appealing yeah like there there are games even you know you know how much i love flesh and blood but i'm not gonna play that with my nine-year-old nephew you better not yeah it's 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 the wrong theme i'm not gonna play it with my brothers who don't play games like it's a little intense for just kitchen table yeah uh unless people in that unless that's what you're looking for right in the same way that People come over and I'm not just like, hey, you want to watch like Game of Thrones? Right, right, right. Uh, Good for you. You know, it's yeah. like that a bit beyond the quality. Would you uh, like to uh, follow a show for eight seasons and then be horribly disappointed by the end of it? That's yeah. something you want okay. your friends to do. So right? number one is the art with a sub point of the art being approachable and friendly. Approachable, friendly, easy to easy to for everybody of all ages uh, yeah. to get into. Okay. So my f- number one thing uh, outside the art, which is the thing that draws you in for the f- in the first place, is the mechanics of the game. Um, are yeah, tell me about the mechanics. The, we'll be playing a game in a little bit with some of the decks from the the master set, the starter. But the uh, re- the the crosshairs I'm always trying to hit when I'm getting into a new game, or I think I, games that I think of that are like super high quality, reach this bar, which is very straightforward and simple to learn and exceptionally difficult to master. Like, the depth of the game is just off the charts. So in this game... too deep. Not too deep. The Mechanically like, speaking? You know, like, too, like Instagram too deep. The rules and the, the structure of the turns, especially with the uh, Reborn update, which we'll talk about that. We'll come back to that in a little bit. Um, is so... Like, it's actually very simple. There's very few moments we're playing where we have to look up rules mm-hmm. or we aren't sure how something's going to resolve or what the timing is and that kind of stuff. And that actually tags into your tag point, which is that simplicity also means not only is the theme and the art really great for playing it with your children or people that don't typically play games, but the rule set itself plays into that as well, right? Yeah. And and that's that um, kind of alignment of the look and feel of it and then also the way it actually plays mechanically and the way it feels when you're playing uh, is super powerful. I think this game is so approachable um, and like universally uh, unoffensive. But a lot of times when you do that, things become vanilla. That's not the case here, right? So the combination of the the theme and the mechanics and the way it looks uh, is so widely applicable, like enjoyable by so many people and the different kinds of characters. You know, you have characters like Jessa that are a little edgier and kind of creepy. Sure, yeah. Well, but that's still like the, the Avril Lavigne of the series, you know? <laughs> So see you later, boy. It, it, took, it took me a minute. Yeah, yeah she's, she's a little punk, right? A <laughs> little punk uh, rock. But uh, you have that all the way to, I think, about, like, Demona. I don't know if that card's even in the system at this point. Should Demona be, right? Odinstar? Yeah, she was an oh, old, old school uh, old from Phoenix the back born. of my brain. But this is just, like, classic, seemingly, like, good guy knight or good gal knight. Mm-hmm. Um, all the way to, you know, like I said with Jessa, which is sort of a darker uh, character, but not so, like, uncomfortably dark, you know? Yeah. Uh, Fab was exploring some of that last year with, like, the... Uh, Levio, the uh, Shadow Brute. It's like this is yeah, it's this about al- the this edge. almost the, as far as I would ever want to go, yeah. and and I I feel like I can handle some stuff. So, anyways, the mechanics are really tight, very well balanced. It's very fun, very simple to learn, but also uh, <laughs> I, it's clear when I'm playing. We get halfway through games on stream, and it's just like it always strikes me how much I feel like I still could learn about this game if I if I was just obsessed with it, it all the time. It may be the the deepest of the bunch, man. True, truly, like in terms of how deep you can go, uh, it it's it's amazing going from intro to feeling like you know what you're doing. Yeah, which one day we'll get to. Uh, uh, I, the, the the gap there is tre- it's tremendous. Yeah. Well, I think the the capacity to master it is very high, 
And a lot of that has to do with there's actually very there's dice involved, which is interesting, but there's very little randomness. So you roll dice, but you can always fix the dice. You one of the mechanically coolest parts of the game is there's a thing called the first five. You pick your opening hand. No mulligans. There's no variance in what you're going to start and play. The way the mechanics work, uh, you play spells like I have a summon silver snake spell. It enters play, and then uh, for the rest of the game, it's a, it's a way for you to summon a creature. So it's removing even more variance because if I put that in play, I always know I can get a, a silver snake out. Um, and then you start with your 10 dice, which are your resources, and so there's not resources in the deck, and your resource curve doesn't change over time. So all these things kind of fit together to mean that you know, you roll dice at the start of the turn, and it's somewhat random, but you, you can kind of fix that. And then everything else is not random. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't know what's in your opponent's hand. That, it's like a card game. You're After turn one, you're going to draw random cards from the top of your deck. Uh, but it's only a 30-card deck. You start with five in hand. So the 25 cards that are in your stack, uh, it's not that many. If you're drawing five of them, I mean, you draw five at the end of each round, right? So you're drawing a fifth of your deck. <laughs> Very low variance, but that also means that the onus on gain and advantage is going to be a, on your decision making. And for some people, you know, if we did the opposite side of this equation, which is like, why wouldn't you play this? I think that can actually be like once I get past the I don't know what I'm doing at all, which is the the rules are simple enough to learn. But then once I start understanding what's going on, sometimes you can actually almost like paralysis analysis mm-hmm. it because you realize how many different lanes there are, and it's re- like it's like. You it's see like, the matrix. Yeah, right? it's very it's too crazy. Much. But but that if seeing that kind of uh, depth is an exciting proposition for you, I think that's what makes this game so good because you could play it with someone who's new and barely knows the rules, and they would keep up, and it wouldn't be like necessarily just awful. But at the same time, the better player is going to win the vast majority of the time in this game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one hundred percent. Um, All right, coming back to me, I will uh, get back into the other side of this, which is not mechanical, since it seems to be the split. So when we're talking about the art and the character design, representation, diversity, off the charts. It is is the the gold standard of this in any game. You're going to see people, obviously, from like different ethnicities, different backgrounds, sexual orientation, gender orientation. The whole game is filled with all of those things without it being overt. Like, you know, a lot of times the concern is like, you're just like kind of like checking a box and throwing something out there that's like, ah, look, uh, it's just a natural part of the game's art design. It's a natural part of the character design. Nothing is like pushed into the fore in some kind of a look at look at us be, being these kinds of people kind of way. So like, it, it's fantastic. This is the golden, like perfect example of how to do this in a game. And again, 2015. 2015. Yeah, definitely early. To they're, so, they're so ahead of the game on, on so many different things. Well, and I think kind of a sub point to that and your art point that is not uh, one of the things I'm going to mention, but specifically... Uh, Did you steal my thunder? I, I think the women in this game are not overly sexualized. Correct. Uh, yeah. which, which you see a lot in tabletop. Yeah. <laughs> it has a storied history in uh, those kinds yeah. of things. Going yeah, back so, to comic books and Conan and all that. Yeah, I really like that. And you even have characters like Brennan. Um, and, and you just see a very intentional uh, laying out of a diverse world, which is really cool. And it, it doesn't feel forced, right? It's not in your face about it, but it just is, yeah. which is super cool. Um, yeah. I, I, I remember back at we hosted an event called Ashes Weekend, um, and there was uh, one player that brought their daughter, and like it was like a, it was really cool to see. Uh, yeah. Very, very uh, atypical in, in this space. I have the next one if you don't. Oh, I, I do have a next one. Okay, you but, piggybacked you know, on, you know, so right. I didn't know if it was... That, that was just me adding to your, you okay. know, your points. Okay, I guess uh, that's so fair. I did the same. Uh, the next one for me is the going mechanical in a different kind of way, which is the release model and the, the cost of Ashes. So it's a non-collectible card game, uh, much like an LCG, uh, but different. So master everything you buy has a playset of what's in it, mm-hmm. um, and it's a super super affordable game. Like the the master set includes all the dice you need, and I think six playable decks right out of the box. And then the expansions are actually packaged as pre built decks that you can play. Um, and even if you're buying all of it, the game's been out since 2015. There's tons of expansions. Um, there's an upside to that is that if you're just not getting in, there's a lot to explore at the <laughs> 
starting out, there's so much to explore. One of the, the downsides of a non-collectible model a lot of times is the release model is a lot slower. But uh, there's already a lot out. And then also the release is somewhat slower than like a collectible card game or something. So uh, currently there's a, a new release once every three months through our subscription service. And uh, it's like 30 bucks for two pre-built decks. And it's going to be roughly that for as long as this, this game continues. But I think it's a super affordable game uh, that you can expand at your own pace. And uh, no matter if you just buy the master set and want to start there or... You know, you spend a couple hundred bucks grabbing everything that exists right mm-hmm. now. Get the whole collection. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think the release pacing uh, is connected to that. So it's a combo of like effectively what it takes to keep up with with, with this game. Um, so if you're looking for something that is an expandable card game that offers the full depth of a game like that, that already has a pretty deep card pool out and is going to keep evolving, but at a, re- a very reasonable uh, and slower pace, uh, this one hits the nail on the head. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll tag into that one uh, as well. So one of the things about games that have a slower release schedule that we've seen with a lot of the LCGs that have come down the pike over many, many years is that a lot of times that means that there's just not a lot happening for any particular Phoenix Born you might like or for anything that you might mm, uh, mm-hmm. enjoy doing. Um, but the thing about Ash is the deck building is so wide open. This is a deck builder's masterpiece of a game. I'm not sure that I've ever experienced deck building as open as it is in Ashes. Basically, you, you choose a Phoenix Born, they're going to come with signature, uh, like three signature cards, like one slot in your deck that you can or cannot run. You don't even have to run those. And then aside from that, it's all up to whatever magic types you want to run. And you can run all of them. I think there's seven now. Yeah. Or you can run only one of them and have a mono deck, and you can swap any Phoenix Born into and out of that shell. Um, so even with a slower release schedule, you're not stuck in the heavily faction locked kind of stuff. We I dealt with this hugely in Conquest, Game um, of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Netrunner was a little better because the influence system, but it still felt like, oh well, Anarch didn't get anything this pack. Okay, well I'm, I don't get to play. Um, Anything that comes out for Ashes, you can immediately integrate into a thousand different decks. It's just all so wide open. So that is a benefit of those two things together. When you have like slower releases, but when a release happens, it's all on the table for you to use as a deck builder. That is a really great marriage of those two things. Nice. How about you? Next point for me uh, is also the, I guess, more macro, the PDP system. So people are asking questions about this earlier that I, I said we'd get back to. So it, it, that's short for player-driven production. We partnered with uh, Plat Hat Games, the publisher, to bring this game back. And uh, effectively, as long as there's at least 1,000 people on that subscription, this game's going to keep getting made and supported and released. And I know a huge concern when people are investing uh, time and money into an expandable game. Tons of options, tons of games you could be playing and, and buying into. And uh, this is one that as long as the players keep supporting it, it's going to keep... Uh, living on, which is super cool and exciting. What a great segue. Let's talk about community. How, that was literally my next point. <laughs> All right. The so, players. Yeah, here's the thing is this kind of naturally, you know, communities kind of build themselves around what the game is presenting a lot of the time. So the Ashes community is all agreeing to play a game that looks beautiful, that is uh, analytically deep. Um, that has representation diversity abounding uh, throughout, that is easy to pick up, that you can play with kids. You know, all of these things, if you take all of that together, you get a group of people that are all just fantastic. Um, you know, and, and every every tabletop game and kind of expandable community has its own way of being great. I mean, I think anything that's cultivated well is going to, you know, be great. But everything's a little different. Every community is a little bit different. And Ashes has this beautiful vibe of like, it's a very dedicated group of people because it's a smaller game, right? So, you know, you think about Magic, we, we, can, we all think about Magic, you go Pokemon, and then like the next tier is like Flesh and Blood and, and the other TCGs that are kind of like vying for those top spots. And they're gonna get a lot of people and, and there's a lot of things that come with that. But when you have a smaller group, which we saw with the LCGs as well, Mm -hmm. and even games like Doomtown and even some of the throwbacks, Star Wars CCG being one of the the notable ones, everybody's just so in and so dedicated and so happy to bring in new players to help anybody who has a a problem. 
Um, it's just a, a wonderful community to be a part of, producing incredible content, um, you know, hosting tournaments, doing the whole thing. The, the Ashes channel in our Discord is phenomenal. The official Ash Discord, phenomenal. Um, tons of great people to connect with. So I would just say that if you're looking for that more kind of personal uh, community, that's a this is a really good game that's going to give you access to that kind of an experience. So. Yeah, and my my final, and then you can run wild if you have any points remaining. Yeah. I think that it's related to the community in that the uh, there are events happening. So Plat Hat hosting uh, various events at various times plans for a lot more of that in the future there's also uh we have a webcam league on the ashes discord there's uh, first five fridays a lot of folks talking about ash techie too ash techie is a fantastic a, online client a way to play over the browser uh but the in terms of thinking about why you should play uh, if you're into the card game experience but it's challenging for from a budgetary or even just a time perspective to keep up with like a collectible game with a big new set every three or four months a constantly evolving meta so the it's a slower pacing in general, but I also think that the if you want very serious games against serious people, those exist. Uh, but the vast majority of people are participating and playing in these organized ways um, that are like just uh, great people. But the the tone and tenor of the tournaments itself is very important. Um, and because there's such a smaller uh, community than like global big events happening all the time, cash prizes and stuff, it is just a different. Uh, vibe than I think a lot, of, a lot of tournaments would give you. Um, and it, it's really cool because because it is such a just a different setting for a game across the board. Everything we've talked about so far uh, creates a really positive environment. I, I played in the webcam league and it's just like everyone from I'm playing with a pre-con to some of the best players in the game getting paired yeah. against. Uh, and I got stomped by some and I beat other people but it was just very strikingly different than any other uh, events that I participated in. Um, but it still gives you that feel. Like if you're after the in-depth card game, diving in, trying to master week over week, getting better, or maybe you only play once a month or whatever it is, it's just a very diverse uh, community of, of people at different levels and experiences. So it offers a lot in terms of wherever you fit into that. And you can you can think about deck building forever. <laughs> Like if you're the person that's like sitting there at night, like uh, let's see what I can you know just get into today. Uh, there's a, a million different ways to build a deck, and Ash is all viable too. It's an, it's truly insane. Yeah. Um, all right, so here's what the community put together. Let's see what, what we hit. Um, simple to learn, hard to master. I think we nailed that one. Check. Deceptively deep strategy and card pool. I think we pretty well got there. Very awesome, welcoming community. Check. Got that. Uh, low variance, high skill ceiling, back and forth gameplay. Not exactly, didn't put in those terms exactly. I, I said low variance, but the yeah. I do think that the structure of the turn uh, reminds me a lot of Star Wars Destiny, and it was before Destiny, so maybe Destiny reminded me of this, which it did. Um, but you take a main action and a side action, and then your opponent does the same thing. And so the pacing of the game is very uh, back and forth and not... You doing all your stuff and getting your resources and playing yeah, your creatures good. and doing your attacks and then I do my thing about and that kind of a thing. It's it's within a turn we're very much very interactive. And then we also have wide open deck building, which I nailed. What we didn't talk about, no resource flood. The fact that your resources are set, they're dice types. Also, when you spend your resources like a physical act, you, t <laughs> you take the dice and you maneuver them. You feel so magical and so wizardy. It's like it's fantastic. So that is important. You you have a modern design that is uh, following. It actually was leading the way in a lot of ways, where your your energy or your resources are turn by turn. Your dice and those dice are ten dice every time. And yeah. you start with 10, and the second turn you have 10, and the third ten, turn you have 10. You don't ramp. You don't worry about having to put resources in your deck, etc. So it is a, a very good kind of modern system. And then finally, one of the most visually unique and arresting art slash graphic design styles of any card game ever made. Put it on the box. It's all there. Stamp it. All right, so here's what we're going to do. And I want to shout out a couple of names uh, that we pulled these from. Oxirador, who I think is in the live chat as well. Yep. Uh, Impossible German. Needs to be mentioned quite a bit, which we will do later. Dubious Archivist, which is a great name. Schmendrix, uh, Chaos Theory, 
What's up, KRC? I think you're out there. JK Lawlings, one of my favorite names as well, and many others in that thread, which uh, we will likely shout out later as well. Um, here's what we're going to do. So one of the great, great pieces of advice that we got in asking the community, what would you teach a new player? What would you tell a new player? Is that you should probably move on from the pre-cons as soon as humanly possible. Sure. And to that note, Jason Lindley, uh, Impossible German, has a blog series that is taking pre-cons and making them into good decks. And as it turns out, one of the greatest deck builders of our time is doing this, uh, Impossible German. So we're going to start here with a pre-con game from the master set. We're going to play Cole versus Mayoni. And the reason we're doing that is because Cole in the pre-cons plays the Iron Rhino, one of my favorite units. Let's face it, my favorite unit. And Zach is a huge Mayoni fan, gets like cards like Molten Gold, and of course, Silver Snakes, etc. Maybe, maybe most importantly, the Gilder. So it's a, yeah, it's a classic matchup that we played a ton in various well-built ways, and probably this very match early on in our uh, yeah. Ashes history. So we're going to start there, and we're going to talk through, as we're playing, some of the reasons that these pre-cons aren't very good. So there's going to be times where our hands are frustrated, where we're just not able to do things that make us feel capable. Those kinds of things. So if you're coming into the experience brand new, you buy the master set, that's still the ideal place to start. There are pre-con deck builds in there. You can play them against each other. And most of us started playing the game using that methodology. And obviously it worked well enough to get us here. But we are going to kind of express why they're not so great. And then next week we're coming back in and I'm gonna take the coal deck and I'm gonna use Jason's advice and I'm going to follow the uh, the series that he's done that's going to take Cole up to the next level. So I'm going to copy that, and I'll, we'll link to all those blogs. Zach is going to demonstrate his own journey, deck building with Mayoni, taking it up to kind of a second tier. And uh, then we're going to come back in. We're going to talk about why the decks changed, what those changes were. We're going to play some more Ashes. We're going to talk through it uh, you know, extensively and address some questions. And then on the third episode, we're actually going to show off uh, online play. So that's a big part of Ashes right now. It's a big part of most games uh, right now. And so we're going to talk about webcam play. We might show off Ash Techie a little bit. We're going to have Zach actually at home. He's going to be logging in, uh, and we're going to play a match online, show you what it's like to play in a league or first five or whatever it is on webcam. And again, maybe Ash Techie. We might show that off my now. Yeah. So uh, saddle up. Just, uh, you know, one of the big reasons that those pre-cons uh, can feel rough is that each expansion is built as a pre-con, but each expansion, because they're trying to give you a playset, necessarily includes three copies of every card, or the max copies you can play. Um, and so, the because of the first five mechanic too, there's a lot of cards that you play one of, you start the game with it in play, and then you don't have to take up other spots in your deck with it. Uh, and also, uh, you know, because they're they're simultaneously wanting to give you a playable out of the box experience and all and cards to expand other decks, they don't necessarily want to give you just a lot of the fundamental pieces you already have right. from like a master set. So uh, sometimes, especially the the you know the expansions, I think the the master set did a pretty good job. But we'll see. I haven't played these decks in a while. Um, the expansions can feel particularly that way. Yeah, it's like this is a really cool tool, but you need these all these <clears> other <throat> cards from back in the day to like synergize with it so to find it'll, that balance, it'll be fun right? to see yeah all right let's go to the top down let's take a look at what this game actually looks like we're zoomed out got a nice big view so uh, as i was talking about one of the key mechanics of this game is called the first five and what that means is that you choose the five cards in your opening hand from your deck before the game starts which is as you, if you think about it incredibly game changing yeah so you're open, this is like an opening in chess, right? You know the exact open that you want to make going into a game. And then starting on turn two, you have random hands. And though you're going to be responding to what your opponent's doing, what they're drawing, what they're playing, etc. But Ashes has a really fantastic mechanic in the conjuration system. So if I look at a card like Summon Iron Rhino, there's things called spells. And you'll see that on the card, it says Spellboard. Right under the text is Ready Spell Spellboard. So your Spellboard, that means this card actually lives on the board once you play it forever. And then every time you have this spell that's ready, you can actually use its text to summon an Iron Rhino onto the battlefield, which is a revolutionarily good mechanic. Because 
you're not necessarily just having to draw into the spells that you're playing. You're a wizard, right? You're a phoenix born. You're a powerful individual. You actually have established from the start of the game on the first turn kind of your macro strategy. So you always have access to your spell, but you always have access to your spells. So you can start playing things. And that's going to be able to ensure that throughout the game, no matter what you draw, you can still achieve your base strategy. And then all the cards that you're drawing from your hand are like usually playing into this base strategy, which for Cole here, He's just getting a big rhino on the table and then seeing if Zach can take care of it, as far as I can tell. That's what the Master Set deck is doing. Um, so yeah, so you've got this first five mechanic wherein you can establish your like all throughout the game game plan. And then you kind of get to see how that plays off of your opponent's strategy and make moves throughout the game to figure that out. So quick rundown, I'm playing Maoni Viper, as I mentioned a couple times. Uh, important to note, the 20 in the middle of her card is the health value. That's how you win the game, by taking your opponent's Phoenix Born's health to zero. Uh, alternatively, people in the chat talking about mill. So this is one of the only games where mill as a win condition is acceptable to me. It actually works. Yeah, and that's because once you run out of deck, every card you would draw uh, that you can't, you actually take a damage to your Phoenix Born. Uh, so hypothetically, if Maoni took zero damage throughout the game and Steven ran me out of deck, I would have to need to draw 20 cards to basically defeat myself um so it it usually means that mill in and of itself uh and some this is you know not i don't want to get on record as saying that mill just by itself is usually not uh not the way to win at the moment at least it's not a super viable uh, strategy other notable stats here on my phoenix born mayoni viper battlefield four that means i can only have four uh conjurations or allies in play uh, which is really nice, like a, the, a finite board space like that. We'll talk about this on upcoming episodes of the podcast, and uh, I, th I think it's just super relevant uh, to w one of the big reasons I love this game. Spellboard 5, that means I can have five of those spells you were talking about in play, five different ones. Your spell book's bigger than mine, I think. Mine is only four, yeah. yeah. Uh, and your health is wee. How, how are you such a wee lad? Yeah, I know, I got a big sword. Well, I'm kind of... Um, I'm a little injured. You're a little saying. older, you know, a yeah. little more fragile. <laughs> we we all are getting a little older. Yeah. Uh, she has an ability here. You'll see the, like, uh, what what shape would you call the side action shape? So like a diamond? Could never tell you. I mean, it's a triangle with some circles involved. Oh, that, that thing, that's a diamond. A diamond? I mean, that's a, that's a form of a diamond. I Anyways, that's, that's a side action uh, symbol. So on your turn, you get a main action and a side action. If we pull up something like the Summon Silver Snake, uh, that's going to have, like, a circular uh i don't even know what you call that shape either it looks like a gem almost this this thing starburst you got your yes. uh, you got your tokens here yeah um that's the action symbol so you get one action one side action on your turn uh then you have this uh, the symbol similar. next to it on manny viper which is the exhaustion symbol which is when we'll put one of these tokens on to do it and then the two with a triangular symbol next to it that's the basic symbol it's on every die uh, the, every resource that you have, that's the basic. We'll cover how that works in a minute. Um, but that's the basic components of a Phoenix Born. All right, shall we kick some things off here? Yeah. I'm looking for a, a link. Yes, I'll send you a link. So honestly, I just like check out all of Jason's stuff. Impossible German? Yeah. Uh, Ashes. Uh, Noah asking, how does Reborn integrate with the old version? So effectively what happened is 1.0 came out in 2015, went away sometime around 2018, 2019. Um, and then in 2020, we partnered with Plaid Hat for what is called Ashes Reborn. And you can tell the packaging because it's all red, like when you're looking at the boxes and whatnot, as opposed to white. But Ashes Reborn is essentially a 1.5. And so the first thing that we did through the subscription service was an upgrade kit, which let you take uh, the cards from 1.0 that aren't changing pair it with the upgrade kit and you have a, a full collection. If you're a new player, you just buy the Reborn products and you're off to the races. The game is 95% uh, the same. A lot of the cards changed. Just better. A couple of key rules uh, got upgraded or uh, fixed uh, and, and cleaned up and smoothed out. And the game was essentially re-released as Ashes Reborn. You ready to go? Let's see. It's my favorite part. Rolling dice. I like rolling dice. So you start the game, you roll dice, and whoever has technically the worst rolls gets the advantage of choosing first or second. So I've only got one basic symbol. I've only got one basic symbol. <sighs> we both so bummed. We both re-roll. So you discount basic symbols, which is that triangular shape. 
We each have 10 dice. Yahtzee. Three. Five. <laughs> so I have the worst roll, uh, which means I worst. I will just go first. So we'll get this first player token. And these tokens are from our um, Arcane token set, which is compatible with Ashes. And you can find that on the website. The best thing about that set is you can use it for almost everything. I've seen so many people use those tokens for a lot of different things. So I'm just going to point this uh, symbol at me. Now, each die has three sides. This is important to know. Yeah. Um, there's the uh, basic side, which is the triangular shape. There is a class side, uh, which in the on these green dice is this leaf. Then there's the power side, which is the most rare. So the power side is a frog on this green die. And there's only one of those per die. And then let me just do the quick math. Two basics and then three class sides. Yeah. So two basic, three class, one power. Uh, and I'm going to arrange mine from left to right, from basic to the most powerful. On my uh, pink dice here, the basics, of course, are the same symbol. Then you have the heart, which is the class, and then a snake, which is the power die. And the, the animal, by the way, is always the power side. Yeah. It's like a cool, it's just cool uh, approach to doing magic. Yeah. It, it feels like an old fashioned wizard battle. And important to note, uh, every die counts for the layer below it if you're trying to meet a certain requirement. So a frog can be used as a leaf or a basic, or a frog, of course. A leaf can be used as a leaf or a basic, and then a basic can only be used as a basic. Yeah, like Zero saying, power side is an animal, uh, class side is an object. Yeah, like so a leaf. A leaf or a, a knife, et cetera. Yeah. Okay, so you said you're going first. I'll go first. So I get an action, a side action. I can take those in any order I want. Uh, I can go side action first or action first. But I'm going to go ahead and take a main action. Keith asking the question that matters: When will the dice trays be available? These are from our friend Mutton Chop. He sent them over to us. We haven't made these ourselves. We might. We might. You just never. But know. they're not available right now. I'm going to play a spell called Summon Gilder. And you'll see on the top right, it's got that starburst looking gem uh, and a heart next to it. So it says one heart. That's the cost to put this card into play. So I'll take a heart and I'll put it in my used uh, tray down here. This is going to be in play. Uh, the, the text itself doesn't do anything yet. No, it's just an action to actually put this into play. There's also some actions and side actions that are available to each player uh, effectively whenever they want. They don't come from cards in hand. One of these is called meditating. So. Meditating, you can discard cards from hand, cards from top of deck, and unexhausted spells from your spell board one at a time to change one of your dice to any side of your choice. So I mentioned earlier, there's really not that much randomness. What dice I naturally rolled is random, but you can literally fix it yeah. uh, with a single side. So I'll go ahead and take an action to meditate. We'll start from the top of my deck. Let me just uh, see what kind of resources I'm going to need here. So I'll start with one. We're going to turn this into a snake, and you can turn it to any side. We'll do another one. Just got another snake. Let's see. I uh, got a frog. They can be exhausted. Really? I didn't know. Yeah. Uh, is that true? Somebody said it. I thought you couldn't use it and then discard it. No. That's let's why we're not good at this game. Do another one. Uh, let's go here. Let's do another one. <laughs> What's up, Luis Carlos? Uh, I play Magic, Fab, and Pledge for Sorcery. Please start showing me cool TCGs. Well, here's the good thing. Not a TCG. That's right. Got a $30 release about every three to four months. And that's it. That's the whole game. So this is a great like side uh, side game, side card game, if you if you invest heavily in a collectible card game. Um, and it's also just a great game if you're trying to get into uh, card games, but you don't want the whole collectible TCG thing. Absolutely. So it, it, really, it really fills a lot of great roles. Uh, apparently, mm. you can meditate exhausted spells. Did, boom, it, did it used to boom, not be that way? Boom. Um, and let's talk about what you just said with the meditate mechanic mm -hmm. real quick. So this is why I think mill in this game is totally in play. Um, so there's an axis that you're balancing where the more your deck is playing power sides and higher die spells, the more you're going to have to meditate throughout the game, which means the more you're literally milling yourself to get the result that you need to play your powerful cards. So if you play a deck that does more basics and class sides, you're going to be more resilient to mill mechanics because you're not going to have to meditate as much. If you're playing heavy power dies, which, which is a lot of the powerful reactions, you're going to have to mill yourself a lot more through meditation to get access to the cards that you have in your hand. So if you come up against a mill deck, you need to understand that like you're attacking their axis as well. 
So it's also a deck building decision, right? Yeah. It's like, well, I could play this spell or I could play this spell and I wouldn't have to meditate as much if I play this one. Therefore, I'd be more resilient, I guess, to mill strategy. And so it's a, it's an action that the game turns on. And I think it's a really important one. Totally. I completely agree. <sighs> um, okay. So let's see. What am I going to do? Have you considered losing? Yeah. Yeah, I really have. Um, okay, I see what I want to do here. I'm going to start by playing a threat. This is old-fashioned card game situation. Um, let's do it. I'm going to play a Hammer Knight. It's going to cost me a goat, oh. a leaf. Why you have such good cards? Though? And then a basic, which I kind of want to look at my cards and find out if there's any of these basics that mean more than others. Camper's asking if we get another Ashes set soon. Uh, so yeah, if you aren't already on the subscription, or if you are, uh, we are expecting the new releases to come in the not-so-distant future. One of the great things of the subscription service, though, is as soon as we can charge you for it and ship it to you, we absolutely will. So you see, we've taken two different routes here. Zach played a Spellboard card, which now is going to allow him to summon something into play. I played an ally, which comes right into the battle line. Um, so there's two different ways that units typically come into play, either directly from hand as an ally or off of a spell that you're playing, like Summon Builder. Yeah, and those allies are nice because they come into play and are immediately usable. Uh, the Conjuration is you have to play the spell and then wait to the next turn if you want to summon them. And so they're just a lot slower. But they last forever. But they last forever. Just so I was saying, if you're unsure, maybe you need to hydrate yourself. I agree. Hydro brain, hydro life. Quick word from our sponsor, Nalgene Water Nalgene Bottles. 100% uh, HDPE made in the USA. I like mine in 48 ounces. I get a light arm workout whenever I drink. That's right. You got to make sure those biceps stay nice and, you know, mm. ready, ready to go. All right, I'm going to take the I'm slow and today. steady path. Uh, of the snake, you know what I mean? They're known for that. We're gonna play the summon silver snake. It just cost me an action. Again, that cost is in the top right. The the action and the cost that you're seeing on the card text is only relevant when you're trying to use the card, which is not what I'm doing right now. And mm -hmm. then my side action. Yeah. I'll pass. I guess I should play, you know, less fast and lose, huh? All right, so here's the situation we've got now. I have a <laughs> unit the on the table uh, that was a threat there that was unanswered. Uh, Zach is continuing to kind of muddle around playing uh, spells. So right now, the Hammer Knight on the board here has an attack of three, life value of four. <clears throat> because there's no opposing units, can swing at the Phoenix Born. Zach has 20 health, so I could do three damage directly to your life total and uh, get some points on the board, as it were. That would exhaust my Hammer Knight. As usual, you can think of it like tapping or anything else. It would exhaust, and then it would be unusable until my next turn. Uh, but it has some good abilities, too. When it, when it uh, destroys other units, it does damage. Also, it doesn't uh, exhaust from countering because of this alert keyword. So, like, there's a lot baked into this unit that is maybe better than three damage. So I don't necessarily want to spin that right now. And uh, maybe I have a card that if your unit's exhausted, I can just take it off the you table. You could do weird things to it, yeah. But, I mean, three damage is three damage, you know? So I've got to think. I can take my main action to attack, or I can continue to build my board here. Also, while I do think it is important, and I'm serious when I say Hydro Brain, Hydro Life, uh, there is some confusion in the chat. There, Nalgene is not actually our sponsor. This is a long, yeah. <laughs> this is a long running joke. Uh, but if you're out there and you do work in Nalgene and you would like to sponsor the show, uh, Inbox is always open. <laughs> that it would be confusing, yeah. That, that that's a funny joke for us yeah. only. <laughs> um, man, should I take the three damage or what? Seems pretty weak to me. It is weak, but it's also guaranteed. It's guaranteed, man. And I know you like those guaranteed plays. But you got a big snake about to come out there, and I gotta be able to kill that thing. The gilder. That's right, Pokey Phantom saying, door is always open to Nalgene. <laughs> All right, let's play a... Uh, and they do make great water bottles. I guess there's no need to sponsor us if we're just going to do it free. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's the, that's no more, no more fake <laughs> sponsorship. It's over. Okay, this gets pretty interesting. Uh-huh. 
All right, I'm going to take a side action. I'm going to discard a card. I'm going to use Cole's ability here. Uh, it doesn't exhaust the So discard a card, choose a player, deal the damage to a target unit they control, or one to their target Phoenix born if they control no units. That's a free damage. So I'm just going to sword slice you there. And then Not very pleasant of you. I thought we were friends. I'm going to main action, play a summon Iron Rhino spell. It's going to cost me a leaf because the top right corner of summon Iron Rhino tells me it takes me a main action and a leaf there. How much does it cost to summon an Iron Rhino it proper? It costs six. How many you got over there? I have six. Woo-wee. Interesting. Okay. We're going to play uh, a copy of Open Memories. Ooh, is that the search one? Yeah. Let's use what I need. Noel Minchow here in the chat. After not playing uh, Ashes in about a year, I busted it out again. I'd forgotten how great the turn economy can feel. Sometimes you're both in a hurry. Sometimes you're both drawing it out. Yeah, the, the fundamental system of this game is just, just excellent. I'm going to go get a Summon Silver Snake. Oof. Wait a minute. What's Focus 1D? It comes in with a status? Comes in with a status. Let's go. What's up, Jan? 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 I uh, just wanted to say hi before going back 45 minutes to the start of the stream. Yeah, that's cool. A little time travel. We'll see you in a bit. No side action. I'm putting that Iron Rhino out. Yeah, dude, let's go. He's got the goods. It's so tempting, you know. It's just always so tempting. What's the... Uh, so uh, pulling up Iron Rhino, I see the number on the bottom left. That's the max number of that uh, conjuration that can be in play on one side of the table. Is it one? Yeah. Right there? Yeah, one rhino. Yeah. Okay. So if you put it out and I don't deal with it, you can't just put more out, you know? That's right. Uh, yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's. Uh, who, can, who needs a first five when oh you can my summon goodness. an iron rhino? Come on now. The man's on fire. We're going to use summon iron rhino. You see the, the bottom here, main action, exhaust. Six basic, so I'm just going to use all six dice because everything's basic or better. Place an Iron Rhino onto the battlefield. That's a 7-4 with Gigantic 1 and Overkill 2. You want to talk about threats. Interesting. Side action. I'm going to do one to your Phoenix form of coal. <laughs> Insult to injury. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's summon a silver snake. Lothar, with a great question here, and it's perfect for this moment. Focus. How does focus work? So a spell, you can have three yeah, copies of it that. attached. So you can have up to three copies, and for every copy you have uh, past the first one is a focus. So focus one is two of them. Focus two would be three copies of the spell. And usually that means that when you cast that spell, you get an additional effect to reward you for being so good at that particular spell. And it means that you can cast multiple instances because you have technically three copies that can all be used. Um, so we'll see here, Zach Summon and the Silver Snake. What does focus one mean? Focus one is not focused. Currently, oh, right. Because just got this thing. Not, but yeah, if it were focused, the Silver Snake would come in with a status token on it. And the Silver Snake has X attack, where X is equal to the number of status tokens on it. So it's zero attack right now. Uh, but it does say after a unit your opponent controls is destroyed, like he gets a status token, he eats him. Uh, four life through recovering. So at the end of each round, he'll recover three health, and then he takes four damage before he goes away. Hmm. Well... Smart Money wants to kill that snake. I don't know why you'd want to do that. If I know anything about snakes, man. They'll bite you? Yeah. Most of them aren't poisonous? Yeah. They're pretty helpful? They uh, kill rodents? Yeah. That's what most people think about when they think of snakes, yeah. Yeah. For sure. I like snakes. Well, I got the beef here, don't I? I just don't like seeing them. It's like spiders, actually. What's up, Anesthesia Cat? I'm a big fan of spiders. They deal with all the things I don't like, but I don't like seeing the spider eater, either. Yeah. 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 Just um, trying to distract you. You want more random facts about spiders? Did you yeah. know scorpions technically a spider? Yes, I did. I told you that. 
See, I'm just trying to get 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 in your brain, make a make a mistake. That's how I win games. Are you gonna like play another and then summon another snake? That's that's your plan, right? Kill this one and then summon another one. I mean, maybe. The game goes deep, even in his weird free con situation. <laughs> <laughs> you love to see it. <laughs> I Joe like Solo's saying, enough with the snake here. hate, Stephen. You're drowning them in sorcery, and now you're outright attacking <laughs> them in ashes. See, I uh, like snakes. You just murder them, though. You see, time. you got one snake die right here, which is what you're going to use to summon that a second time. It's going to come in with a status token. This is the this is the worthless snake. This but snake has no purpose. It has a purpose, which is to stop that iron rhino from hurting. Mm hmm. Hurting the queen. Mm hmm. But what if. We have a different plan. Um, I'm going to swing hammering into that silver snake. Then. Chaos theory claiming that spiders are not, uh, scorpions are not spiders. They're arachnids. I mean, uh, maybe but what is a spider? different genus, species, etc. What are you doing? I'm going to swing uh, hammer knight into your silver snake. When I declare an attack, I can choose either an opposing unit or an opposing phoenix born. Now, the cool thing is that your phoenix born, once per turn, can step in front of an attack targeting a unit uh, or not. And a few few things that are worth clarifying there if you're new to the game. Uh, attacking is an action, and players have that as an action available to them. Your Phoenix Born actually doesn't ever attack. Um, when you attack, you can declare any number of attackers into a Phoenix Born. Uh, when you're attacking a unit, you actually can only declare a single uh, attacker into that unit. Uh, and then any time that you, uh, your Phoenix Born is getting in front, like if technically right now Mayoni could step in front of the snake and, and uh, guard, for the unit is what that's called. Uh, conversely, if your unit was actually attacking my Phoenix Born, my Silver Snake or allies could block for the Phoenix Born, which is a keyword, where they actually step in front of the Phoenix Born. Uh, and as you mentioned, um, Phoenix Born can only guard for a unit once per round. So once we usually round, show okay. that by my exhausting, which actually I'm going to do. Tapping. Yeah. So uh, you're attacking with a Hammer Knight. I will actually uh, guard with Maoni. So she's now the target of the attack. All right, I'm going to swing for three. All right, she's going to take three and go to five total damage. You're 25% of the way to your victory condition. I will pass my side action. All right. Mine, my main action, we're going to summon Gilder, uh, exhaust it, spend a leaf. We're going to get to summon a Gilder and do a damage to one of your units. We will damage... Hmm... Tough to say. Iron Rhino. No recovery. Mm-hmm. I need a fester right about now. Mm-hmm. It's unfortunate that I don't have that color of dice in my pool. <laughs> Get the old unit guard snake situation. So I'm yeah. in a hurry here. Uh that's what we call derping around. I'm gonna pass my main action back to you. Now if Zach passes his main action here, we go to the next turn. I won't. I'm going to play a Summon Silver Snake. Mm -hmm. So it attaches, it's now focused. So anytime I would use this, uh, I will get that Focus 1 ability. Also, it's a totally separate copy of the card. So now I could technically use it multiple times, which is what you were referring to earlier. If you actually defeat this Silver Snake, who has a Conjuration Limit of 1, I could use this other copy of the spell to put it right back out. But now it's focused, so it would come in with a token. That's right. Um, I will pass my main action again. Mm -hmm. This went very much in my favor. <laughs> Uh, uh, when you were summoning the Rhino, I was like, this is just bad. In, in my head, I was like, I'm going to have to summon the Gilder, and then you're just going to stomp on it, and then I'm going to put this... It's just bad. This worked out way better than I, yeah. you know, I had it. Yeah, what are we going to give you a shot out of the pre-cons? Right? That's right. We're going to play a Hypnotize, another ready spell, cost an action, and it's going to let me uh, use two hearts in a future turn, exhaust it, and then I can basically sneak by you because I hypnotized you. Hypnotize... Um, okay, well, I think we'll just snack up mm, really your current snake is the least threatening of them. So why don't we just, uh, why don't we attack your gilder here? Mm-hmm. Well, I can't do anything about that. So, uh, I'll get destroyed, and when the gilder leaves play, I get to put a status token on something. And the old Iron Rhino has overkill too, so if it destroys a unit, 
Your Phoenix Born takes two damage. Mm. That's so important that it has that. <laughs> it's really important. It used to not. Yeah, it's crazy. Okay, over to me. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to use an action to play Empower, or side action. Cost me a basic. And then it's got a, uh, for a leaf, I can exhaust it, put a status token on something. So, as my main action, I will exhaust it, spend a leaf, we'll put another status token on the snake. And then I will pass uh, to you. Mm hmm. I gotta think about this. So, I could use Mammony uh, to do two damage to something, and then I could attack something. I feel like that Hammer Knight's got to go. Hmm. Do one there, save the snake. Yeah. I'm gonna use Manny side action. You got it. Use two power dice. Oof. Oof. But it, it had, it was my backup to some of that other snake, as you were predicting, which is why I did everything that I did the way mm -hmm. I did it. You're gonna have two but anyways, lines. Manny's ability, Command Strike, I spent my two. Choose an unexhausted unit I control. Deal damage to a target unit equal to the chosen unit's attack value. So I'll do two damage to your, uh... no, it won't. Oh no, it's so bad. <laughs> You can guard. I'll do two damage to the iron rhino. Two damage to the iron rhino. Okay. And what do you? What's the consequences of that? Uh, I spent two dice. That's it. Exhausted. You don't take damage in return or anything. Mm -mm. Then uh, my snake will attack your iron rhino. Hmm. Nom nom nom. I'll guard it with coal. Yeah. Take two. We did it. Over to you. Your your action. Mm, so I can take a side action or a main. You're out of dice. I'm out of dice. We're all exhausted. I go to the top of the round. Oh, it's so good. Um, I will pass. All right. I will also pass. First player uh, points in the direction. Remove one exhaustion from every card that we have on the table. Uh, go ahead and fix this. We roll our dice. So you can basically, any dice you didn't spend, you can reroll if you want or leave them as they were. Then after you roll, you can actually discard any number of cards from your hand if you have any left. So if you decide you didn't get the magic that you needed to, to play magic. certain cards or you're looking for certain stuff, and then you draw back up to five, and you rinse repeat until someone is no longer alive. And now we get into it. The moment. Mm-hmm. Wow. These pre-cons are popping, man. <laughs> are we just bad deck builders? Yes. <laughs> I didn't know how to tell you this. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, here we go. Thanks. Oh. <sighs> Goodness gracious. It's a big old rhino you got there. Yeah, I think I'm just going to take it while I got it. Oh, you got to. You got to take it while just you like got it. Just like summon a gilder and destroy it yeah, for no reason. You got to take that. Uh-huh. All right, so Iron Rhino main action is going to attack uh, Yield Silver Snake. In fact, yeah, I maybe am just going to... You could maybe make the wrong decision. I'm going to attack into Mayoni. All right, I'll take seven. All right, let's go. So three. No. I'm going from seven to 14. Oof. It's not going to be a long one. And then side action. I'm going to discard from top of the deck to oh. start changing some dice. We're going to change this to a frog. It's my first meditation. I can do this any number of times as I'm going along. Um. I think I'm going to do it one more time, just just because when you need frogs, only frogs will do. And then I'll pass the turn to you. Do 
Jesse, may have a huge amount of love for this game from Australia. By far one of my favorite card games at the moment, along with Flesh and Blood. Let's meditate. What's up, Chris? Yep, yeah, we're just doing a, a, a proper introducing series for Ashes. We've been playing it for a long time, but I feel like there's a, a lot of folks that haven't gotten the full kind of rundown on what the game's about. So. Don't mind me, just burning my deck. All right. And then main action. Like that, Jesse, yeah. Had a lot of fun playing pre-cons purely for the casual aspects. Spent most of my time duck building for fab, so I can just grab a deck and go to play Ashes, yeah. Lothari, is it generally accepted to meditate from top of deck over hand unless you really, really need to ditch a card? Yeah, that, that's generally it. So like, like any card game, right? Like your cards in your hand for the turn are a big part of your resources for the turn. Um, I can't play any cards from my deck this turn. So I'm basically burning the time of the game. So the clock of the game is what I'm burning. And then, uh, so I don't have to burn my current tempo in the game. It's always the question. I'm going to summon a Gilder, and we'll do a damage to your Hammer Knight. Hammer Knight? Can't let you have another Rhino running wild around here. What? All right, let's play a side action Chant of Revenge. After an ally is destroyed, I can place a status token here, and then I can side action remove it to deal a damage to a target Phoenix Born. So this is now Zach on the clock. And I imagine that's going to happen more and more. And then uh, let's mm -hmm. make a deal. Let's do a little main action. Mm -hmm. mm -mm 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 -mm. Let's do a main action close combat here. Choose an unexhausted unit, Hammer Knight. I'm going to deal damage to a target unit equal to the chosen unit's attack value. Uh, so let's do three of that Gilder. And then I place a wound or an exhaustion on the chosen unit. So I'll place one wound on my Hammer Knight. I'm going to have a reaction. A you new, got a reaction? New, new kind of card we haven't talked about yet. What? It's called the Golden Veil. Uh, so you get one reaction per turn. So a turn would be Steven's action, side action, my turn, side action, side action. Uh, so my reaction is going to be Golden Veil. I can play a spell after an opponent targets a unit you control with a spell, ability, or dice power. This being a spell, action spell. Cancel the effect and the remaining effects of that spell, ability, or dice power. Mm. So I will not cancel. Give you the old finger wag. Die for trying a to die. Get, get rid of my uh, mouse. Uh, I'll pass it over to you. Moose asking if we have a scheduled date for more sorcery streams. We don't, but you can trust that we will be revisiting that game often. Soon. Very soon, yeah. Okay. So I denied your request. Chris, yes, you can. Uh, you can destroy your allies to, to hit the Chant of Revenge. With Cole's ability, particularly, he's very good at that. You'll notice, too, on Golden Veil, you have uh, Mayoni protecting a Gilder there at her feet and a snake. Is there a snake in that, right? And on Golden, Golden Veil? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the snake's behind her. Yeah. And then the Gilders are down there under yeah, her cape. So cool. I love The yeah. first What's time up, I man? saw the Gilders in that art, I was very, very pleased with what was happening. Okay. 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 Hammer Knight's got to go. Hmm. Um, it's crazy how much the art on these are built around things that are going to happen in a game with the precons. Yeah. Like Golden Veil vale just did exactly what it's showing in the art, and I've got a card that's probably going to do the same. Yeah, she literally just protected the mouse. Yeah, so cool. It's great. Oh, does Hammer Knight not take the damage after all if you cancel that? Yeah. Uh, when does it say it happens? It says deal damage to another target unit, then place one wound token or one Yeah, it cancels option. everything. Cool. Remaining. 
healthier than ever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How good does this game look, though? Um, this is kind of interesting. Is this a perfection of the play creatures in attack game? It's very high on my list. It's got everything I want out of it. Um, and I, th- I think we, we did an interview with Nick and Isaac uh, when we announced Reborn. And when Isaac was t- talking about the first principles of the game, it made so much sense yeah. why I loved it so much. Like, starting with 10 resources, there's no mana screw, there's no uh, curve that gets out of control, and no board states that get out of control. Uh, equal access. Uh, like you go down the list of everything he was talking about, it's just like, no wonder. Yeah. You're hitting all the marks. Hitting the beats. All right, so I think... I'm drop my beats. I think I go here, here. What's up, Wade Jones? Just checking in to say hello. You two got me to buy into this game ages ago now, and it's still just a great game. It does that. Well, thanks, Wade. It is still a great game. It's beautiful. We may be in for a bamboozler. (laughs) Seriously, though. Okay. Let's try it. Uh, I'm gonna play a transfer. What's that do? Cost me a basic and a heart, so I use a leaf and a heart. Move a token from a target player's non-Phoenix board card onto another non-Phoenix board card controlled by that player. Okay, bring it on. You can exhaust my hammer knight. Yeah. Side action. Uh, also, each power dice has a special ability, and it's one of the side actions available to all players. The frog is the best. Uh, the frog. <laughs> You can spend it to do one damage to a unit or conjuration. So I will use the frog, and I will attempt to do one damage to your iron rhino. You did it. When that happens, silver snake will trigger after a unit and opponent controls is destroyed. So a unit is the umbrella. That means a conjuration or an ally. After he's destroyed, get a status token. So I'll flip it to a three. We're powering up. It's like the spirit bomb that never hits. <laughs> it's true. Uh... Okay, let's see. How many how many dice do we have, and how many dice do we want? Torres, you guys teaching a game you're well-versed in is reminding me of your early Netrunner and Destiny How to Play videos. <laughs> yep. Van says, no bamboozling. I don't know what happened the past couple of weeks. It was it all started with a snake you drowned. But I <laughs> the usage of bamboozle in my everyday sentences yeah, has man. skyrocketed. You got to use, you use it. It is the fundamental language of card games. All right, so what are you going to do? You're going to try to send a little snake in here or something. I'm going to play the lowly iron worker. It's going to cost me two. The hammer looks heavy. I'm going to pull uh, one here and one here. I, I do. I do feel like the handle is a bit inadequate for that hammer. It wouldn't be very wieldy. <laughs> Unless it's it'd some be unwieldy as, as you might say. Special material. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jim, I don't get a chant token, unfortunately, because the rhino is a conjuration and not an ally. And it's very it, it's specific there. If, if Chant of Rin said unit you control, that would be fantastic. But it just says ally because you can't revenge a conjuration. It's a it's an ever present, ever coming back entity. But you can revenge an ally. That goes to the discard pile. Good to see you, Jim. Don't you know? You scared of that iron worker? No. I'm very unintimidated. <laughs> Well, I'll just use my action on Empower. I know, it's a mistake. We're going to do it. Spend a leaf. What does that do? Put a status token on a unit. I oh. Control. Boy, that snake just keeps getting bigger, right? It's like I'm the last you, scene in Aladdin. I told you, it's a spirit bomb. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if it hits. Next time on Dragon Ball Z, will Goku save the world? <laughs> on Goku saves the world. <laughs> he does. He does save the world. But it wasn't because of the spirit bomb. I'll tell you that much. Her ability keeps getting better too as that snake gets, you know, snackier. Oh. 
Doot, 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 doot. You're gonna have to do something at some point. That's what I gotta kind of wait around for. I mean, you can see what's ha happening. The snake is what I'm doing. I could threaten Rhino here. Or I could just play the game, you know? Why threaten it whenever you can just not? You, oh. got other, you got other cards in your hand, you know? You got other cards. This is an option. You got other cards. Van saying the white mat with the uh, cards looks so cool. Yeah, thanks. It is a good looking mat. We're talking through, people keep asking about if we're ever gonna make it available, and we're, we're talking about it. People were talking, man. No, you know what I just realized? So normally we're like way more zoomed in. Yeah, we got plenty of space. But like I'm, I'm let the game breathe. Free, free as let a it bird, breathe, yeah. I say. Usually I'm like playing around the our faces up there and stuff. I mean, I'll, I'll. How about we put you on the clock a little bit? All right, let's go. How about we make you feel a little weird? I'm gonna play strength in here, main action. The card you haven't seen in a while, huh? I don't even know what it does. <laughs> Uh, I can take a side action, add two to a target unit's attack value for the remainder of the turn. Hmm. Huh. Uh, so that iron worker in the art is empowered by Cole's magical uh, presence yeah. and becomes a four attack, which could be a problem for our friend Zach. Yeah, okay. It's just the right amount to kill uh, the snake. Particularly that Gilder's gone. Which is why, as a side action, we're going to use a frog to do one damage to that gilder. Well, now, that's not very kind of you. <laughs> what is this? This isn't numb. Um, mm -hmm. be a real shame if I made another one of those. And then kept poking my... Gilder? Yeah. Uh, you know, be a real shame, wouldn't it? Yeah. I'm just relieved that you can't summon another rhino, honestly. <laughs> I'd rather not have to keep dealing with him. So you deal with my big stuff, and I just let the snake grow forever. That's yeah. my plan. As long as I never hit, you're good. <laughs> you know? It's true, though. You can hit right now. A little hypnotize. You want to tell? I'll get you a toe by Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, nothing but a reckoning uh -huh. is coming your way after Surely. That. Surely. Well, it's interesting. It is interesting, dude. Game's always interesting. I gotta give mm -hmm. it that. Three dice. How many cards may I have? One. One hand. Yeah. It's potatoes, Bill. No, it's not a hand worth having. <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to like you playing one of Impossible German's deck, where yeah, it's just like it's smasher beef. after just smashing down. It's crazy. Okay, here's how I'm gonna do. Very simply. Silver Snakes is going to attack. Uh... You already declared with a wave of your hand, so you know. <laughs> we'll attack uh, your Iron Worker. Iron Worker? Yeah. But we can't have that. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah. I'll, I'll, uh,. <laughs> I'll guard that with cold air. I'm going to take four. That's right. So this I'm officially on the scoreboard. Two becomes a six. It's not a skunker. <laughs> we need a pot for skunker. And bamboozler. <laughs> okay. All right. So Cole's done the hard work here. Over to me. Mm-hmm. Well, I think I kind of know how this one's going to go. We could side action there and then do some things, but you know, we, it's not right. Um, let's just show off what Ashes can do. Let's do a, I'm gonna use the power die on, the on goat. Ceremonial to get a ally back in my hand. It's an anchor knot. I like this play. And so you, you get an ally or discard pile and you take one damage. I take one damage because I'm dabbling in the dark arts. And I'm gonna take a main action to play that ally do one damage to your gilder because the anchor knot says when it comes into play deal the damage to another target unit and i'm going to spend that christopher asking uh was command strike not a viable option there command strike being manny viper's ability you'll see why i wasn't using it shortly i'm just going to spin that here which is a shame to waste a goat on that but here we are 
And uh, you're doing a damage something? Yeah, damage to the Gilder. Oh, man. All right, Gilder's going to go away. Inheritance when this unit is destroyed. Put a status token on another unit. Like, Hopefully you can't, like, possibly. Uh, be devastating, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. Mine? Oh, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Frog's looking pretty good. <laughs> the old anchor frog. How much life do I have left? How much life do I have left? <laughs> I got, ask, eight, ask, I got eight life. Eight asking, life. asking for a friend. Eight life. Yeah. You got one basic symbol over there. Yeah. Trying to let the snake snap me twice. I would not recommend it. Could happen. We're here. It's ashes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can watch out. Can the snake do it? Let's go ahead and play can a refresh. Refresh. Oh, he can. Oh, dog. He sure uh, can. Remove all exhaustion tokens from a target unit. Silver snake, of course. Yay. Uh, side action. I'm going to actually use the command strike mm -hmm. to uh, deal the five damage here to the iron worker. Iron worker? Come on, man. Well, you have four coming at me if I don't deal with it. Come on, man. Uh, when he leaves play, Snake will eat him. And actually, he gets removed from the game. And I'll get a chance right? of revenge. No, nope, not anymore. It used to be he would eat it, and they would get removed from the discard pile. Chant of revenge, here we are. Hmm. You got no dice. So, uh... You probably can't remove that ink or not, if I were guessing. Coming back to the top of the round for you. Doesn't look good. Two to an attack value. Swing in for three there and take a bunch. Let's meditate. Up to Frogland. And then I will be uh, passing my main. Uh, snake will attack your hammer knight. The hammer knight? You got it. He's just so hungry. I'll we'll get another gone. status token. Yeah. Don't let it, don't let it attack me again. <laughs> you got no dice. You got the hypnotize at the top of the round. Mm. I need something. Mm. I need something to do. Oh no. Change your that? Oh, you just keep stacking them. I haven't used it yet, yeah. Oh, it says it has no status tokens on it. Oh, right. That's why, I, in my mind, I was like, when I was using that back then, I felt like I could only do it once. John the Bard, glad Ashes is back on the table. <laughs> okay, I say says, we love that you're still remembering 1.0 rules. Yeah, it's, it's in the brain somewhere. Mm -hmm. For a minute there, I, was, I felt like I was getting skunked. Yeah, well, we didn't want that to happen on camera. I, I appreciate you not embarrassing me yeah, publicly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you don't like doing that. You can't let that happen. Um, let's see. What are our options here? Uh, well, we can get you scared, like a little close, you know, like scared. You get, get scared about some things. <laughs> uh, Nothing like scaring your opponent. Let's do a side action. Let's strengthen. And then let's attack that silver snake with the anchor knot. Uh, for two? Uh, three. Uh, two, yes, that's correct. Does that change anything? Nope. Right. Um, I just can't take the risk. I'll uh, block for two with my own. You got it. it it's, it, from what I can tell, you can't, you couldn't defeat the snake. And then I'd recover that damage away, so it may be a waste of taking the damage here. But if you have any card that... Oh, you have Chain of Revenge. You could defeat the snake, right? I can defeat the snake a million ways. I've got a frog die. I've got a sword slice. I've got a Chain of Revenge. So you're so close to being able to get rid of this. A million snake. ways. Just don't it. let it happen. A million ways to do it. Um, I will snap, snag the... Yeah. And then over to you. Something Main about action. victory. <laughs> I'll just pass. <laughs> From the jaws of defeat. 
Uh, okay, then we go. And you got recover three there. Mm -hmm. Let's do side action, deal the damage to Phoenix War, mm -hmm. Chant of Revenge. Main action. Mm. Apparently Chant can't target units. It could in 1.0. Wow, got those old, those old rules in the brain. Um, yeah, I think I'm just gonna have to pass. Pass on. Threading the needle here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Send that snake right through you. Yeah. I mean, Bye. I still, to even use the hypnotize, I have to get the hearts. Notable. It's true. So. Let's just see you roll no hearts. <laughs> get these hot hands going. That's right. No hearts, no hearts, no hearts. No heart bun. Mm. He got two hearts on the he dot. just got two. Come on. Can he do it? Yeah, I don't even know if there's any... I don't know what cards are in here that would matter. Well, it would only get you to one, right? Currently? Oh, so, come on. You got, you got secrets. So we're not done yet. We're not done yet. That's right. Um, ready here. And then let's draw up. Oh, yeah. I do have secrets. It's actually really, really, really gross. <laughs> Um, we'll just keep my hand. Mm. Alright, so I think the play... I think the play... I don't know what you have available to you. It's very terrifying. You're telling me, man. <laughs> so, I'm pretty sure... The safest play is using Maoni to pop your anchor knot, get my eighth token, and swing for eight. I think that's safe. Yeah. But, because you don't have any snakes. This is anything that leaves the board? Any unit, yeah. Yeah. I think so. Do I have any reactions? That well. That's a question. So I could also technically just use the frog. But if you had like a, you know, it's, example would be like a particle shield, but mm -hmm. any one damage cancel. Yeah, the pre cons and eh, probably, not, so, probably not there. And wasting my man ability, though, is like a big risk, you know? So it's a little this, a little that. <laughs> Anyways, let me see what dice I might possibly use in the event that you bamboozle me, which you always just count on getting bamboozled. Use those, use those hearts. I think I'm gonna use one of each. So will you use Manny? Will exhaust her? I'm going to do seven damage to your anchor knot. It's not an attack. Uh, choose not exhausting. You control the damage to target and equal the chosen unit's attack value. You seven. Get a token. But the value's X. <laughs> Swing it, cool. You got me. I snaked him. I got oh nothing. my goodness. <laughs> that is like. That was intense. Ash is one of, I thought I was losing so long ago. Yeah, it's, it's classic. I mean, it's good. It's classic Ashes. Um, you got to, I mean, you just have to find your, your win condition, right? So win condition is the snake. That's why you took seven. Yeah. And then you kept the snake alive. I kept not, I kept not wanting you to be able to, to summon a new snake. That one got bigger. Didn't really have the tools. You had some good tricks to make the snake work. Um, and then... Here we yeah, are. Like yeah. I could have spent a lot of time burning that down and not doing damage, which is probably right, but it's a tough equation. It's interesting, right? right? It's a good game. Yeah, and I that turn one where I set up the, I could, if you attack with a rhino, I could just block it and then get the other snake out, mm -hmm. or you leave this one and I can just slowly start stewing on you it. You gotta leave it, especially when the new yeah. one's coming in at one. I think. Yeah, last round when you had six dice left, and I I did the move where I moved the exhaustion and then popped the rhino. I was hoping you would actually summon another Rhino. Yeah. Because I actually had another transfer. Oof. So I could transfer the exhaustion from your summon iron Rhino to your Rhino. Yeah. And then you'd be locked out of the turn. Yeah, super good. The pre-cons actually, they do a really good job of pushing some of those concepts. Um, you know, like, coming to this next hand, the 100 blades, anchor knot, strengthen. Yes. I mean, like, so, so Cole's trying to get 
some amount of board presence going. Mm -hmm. um, early on, I went way harder at life total. Instead of playing like Iron Worker and stuff, I chose the Rhino first turn over yeah, playing yeah, yeah. out that first hand, which I think is acceptable. Well, um, but it, it's the kind of game that you can think about. You can analyze plays forever. Yeah. And it, you can see how deep that it goes. Well, and like you mentioned chess openings earlier, but I think the, you could do, take the same first five, play it out a handful of times mm -hmm. going first or second, and there are ways to sequence it that get you ahead or behind based on what you and your opponent do. And it's just little changes in the order of stuff that, that's happening. Even there, if you didn't summon the Rhino and play the other cards instead. But yeah, a different game, right? The, Iron Worker comes out, do, they, the, do you get extra cards? The Rhino forced me to summon the Snake. And I ideally, I, I didn't do that yet. I would rather focus and just start with a token on it. Mm -hmm. But you, because you, you put, put it out, like out, I right? had to put it out. And then yeah. that put you in the position too, where it's like, you made me move my knight, and then I made you not attack, basically, because you didn't want to clear it and let me get the other snake. There's a lot to it. It's so good. Yeah, um, so good. Uh, so Chaos Theory saying in the chat, someone in the Discord post the other day, they were they swung with 60-plus attack with a snake somehow. Can, can you imagine? Deck building's wide open. I'm telling you, deck building's wide open. When, when I get to, like, 6-plus, I, I, I've had one game of the snake where I got more than 10 tokens on it mm -hmm. and hadn't didn't get to attack with it, but... There's so many cards in the card pool that can just kill it. Oh, like, yeah. It's yeah. Very, yeah. Things like Fester. Or Fester's like, really good against There's it, a lot yeah. of examples of, and the whole time you're on the razor's edge of like you're continuing to build and protect it, and you just need the one moment where you can like hypnotize through, or like in that case, I, I could clear the board. It feels like a snake, right? It's like rising up, and then you need that moment where you can actually Strike. push it through. Strike. Well, there you have it. Ashes Reborn, here's the thing. Um, great, great game. The release schedule is slower than your TCGs. There's no collectability. So like that's a huge part of an, an appeal to a great number of players. Even if you've not played card games before or competitive card games before, this is like the perfect entry point. If you're currently playing a TCG, uh, then it involves a lot of money and time and, and big like pro tour tournaments and stuff. It's a great, refreshing uh, game to play in the off season, if you will, mm -hmm. um, or whenever just looking to like relax and maybe just enjoy yourself a little bit more and not having to uh, to grind out the the top meta deck, etc. But then, if you want to take Ashes very seriously, there's a wonderful community waiting for you to do that. Um, there are people with incredibly good, they're incredibly good at Ashes. Yeah. Unreal. Which makes them probably inc some of the best players of anything. Because being incredibly good at Ashes means that you're you're on a different level of analytical like and deck building prowess. So it's really incredible. A ton of different reasons you might want to get into this game. Uh, and then we'll be back on the next episode where we'll take these two decks that you just saw. We'll take the experiences we just had and be like, okay, well, I got to get some tools here. And then we're going to use a combination of Impossible Germans Adventuring Party series, where I'm going to take the cold deck from that and just kind of bring that to the table. That's available to anybody who's playing Ashes. It's a great series Incredible. Um, that we'll link yeah. to. And then Zach is going to take this Mayoni deck and tweak it up and make it a little more exciting and a little more modern. And then we're going to play those decks against each other. We're going to talk through those turns. Uh, and then, of course, episode three, we're going to be talking about webcam and playing online and that whole thing, because that is a big part of this game and many others now. So uh, appreciate everybody being here. Um, if you have any questions about Ashes or otherwise, even if you're just thinking about getting in, you can go to the Ashes Discord. You can come to our Discord and the Ashes channel, which is a great place to be. Tons of people you've seen here in the chat are there fairly constantly. Um, so ask any questions, get any help, uh, even if it's like, I can't decide. I, I'm trying to weigh these two variables. Yeah, uh, we'd be happy to help you. Incredible community for that. Do that. Final question for me, for, coming from Chris Gilbert. Do you have a favorite? He's, he asked from the core set. But do you have a favorite, favorite Phoenix Born in general? Hmm, it's hard not to be Rin. I think this mm -hmm. is just the like average mm -hmm. case of like sometimes the things that look the most like you are the things that you like, and Rin and I look the exact same. I mean, it, it really holds up because I think my two favorite well, are Northville. Mayoni and Brennan. So I look just like those guys. I mean, yeah, Zach. <laughs> look at Mayoni. Zach is practically. And there's Brennan, yeah. yeah basically me. Actually, if you, if, you may, if you took Brennan and Mayoni and you, you combined them, I think you do get Zach Bunn. <laughs> now that I think about it, this is the perfect. Right, let's, let's Where's Mayoni? The, graphic, yeah, the alt art promo. Just kidding. Um, yeah, I, mean, I have a ton of favorites, though. 
Um, I really had a good time with what's her name. I'm drawing a blank. We had the promo with the water. Um, Aridel Summergard. Aridel. Aridel Summergard. I was just like blanking. I could yeah. just see the card. Boy, she's classic. She yeah, has direct I, control. I, I really like Aridel. I also I, I like Jessa. There's a lot of characters. Oh, I love Odette. I mean, I just keep going down. I Odette's have a ton, killer. Ton of ton of characters in this game that I'm a huge fan of. And look at all how awesome they all are. There's yeah. just so many. And you know what? You can take like I had that Rhino deck. I have I have done I have done a more advanced all right rhino deck uh which means it's about as good and you can take that that deck and you can throw it into different phoenix born leading that deck and it plays out totally differently you get yeah. different tools and so you can start to like really have like a core thing that you like and you can explore how different phoenix born run that template and it's the most fun thing it's the most fun thing all right everybody We'll see you next week. Come on back uh, next Wednesday. We'll we'll have more ashes for you, and we'll have uh, any questions that need answering. In the meantime, please do stop by our Discord and ask those. You can find Ashes Reborn on our website um, you, to subscribe if you want to get on the bus and start playing it in a consistent way, or head over to Plat Hat Games website. They've got all the back catalog of Ashes Reborn. You can find all the products there. We suggest you start with the Master Set, which is effectively a core set. Phenomenal value. If you don't want to go past that, that's great. And it's still you do, a wonderful box on your shelf. If you do want to go past it, the Law of Lions, the Songs of Soaksend, and then the, what's the time one? Breaker of Fate. Those are the, the you know three that. boxes that come with the really nice storage containers and uh, the extra, the other dice type that got introduced to the game. Those are the three to buy after the Master Set. And from there, pick your favorite uh, Phoenix Born, buy the expansions, and go have a wild. great time. Yeah. Take care, everyone. We'll see you next time.